Welcome, how to EGD learners. I'm Stefan Klein, and this is episode five in the How to Hack Your Pet series. And boy, in the first four, we've really looked at how to get from the design brief to where we are with our freehand concepts. And now, in this video, I'll take you step by step through those concepts and even show you how to do them as well as what will be the requirements. Make sure you watch it all the way to the end. Please remember to subscribe, like and share this content. I want as many of you and your friends to get to this content and benefit from it. Let's get going. Let us take a look at page 12 of your civil EGD pad and we're going to zoom in of course at number three here preparing neat detailed free and drawings. Now of course I'd like to start off by reading through exactly what is required. We're then going to look at the checklist and after that we'll go on and we'll actually look at how to do it and some practical examples. So first of all let's have a read. So the detailed freehand drawings must be of the floor plan layout of two possible design solutions for the proposed new building. Each freehand drawing must show the correct presentation of all building features. This is critical. You have to draw it according to suns. In other words, your walling features, your doors, your windows, your layouts, all of that needs to be according to suns and I'll show you how. Then you have to do permanent fixtures also according to the correct presentation. Permanent fixtures of course refers to your toilets, your basins, your built-in cupboards, etc. The roof line needs to be indicated. The undercover walkways needs to be shown as well as the primary dimensions and labels. In other words, the room designations, the width of the walkway, for instance, the sizing of the building, the primary dimensions, that all needs to be shown. The calculations of the, for the total floor area, so of the media center, that's one calculation that you must get, and the total area of the entire building. Okay, which excludes the walkways must be clearly shown in a table on the drawing sheet. So on that same drawing, at concept, the first concept, you must show a table with your calculations of floor area. On the second concept, again, a table on that same drawing sheet. Okay, and of course, yeah, it's going to be free end. All right, let's look at the notes here. Grid graph paper must be used to assist with the preparation of the freehand drawings so that all features and fixtures are drawn to proportions. That's the reason for it, to get your proportions right. Um, and I have actually a copy of my grid graph paper in the description below this video. And then that grid graph paper must be, must be included in the pad portfolio as proof. And that's actually a mark that you're going to lose if you do not include it. So make sure that is included. All aspects of the freehand drawing, including the dimensions, the tables, the labels, and the possible information blocks must be prepared using a pencil. Now they did say in our preparation for this that you can actually use colored pencils as long as it is pencil. So no cookies, no pens. The use of any other drawing instruments, example a ruler or a compass, will be penalized. We do not want to see a ruler or a compass near these pages. Then they are set or state here that no borders or title panels are required for the drawing sheets and electrical fittings and wastewater disposal systems are not required on the free drawings. Okay, I'm fine with electrical fittings and the wastewater disposal systems, but honestly, if you're wanting to do a proper job here, how can you not put a border around the paper? Okay, and at least you will need some form of panel. It's not doesn't have to be a full civil title panel, but you're going to at least need your page number, your name, the title of the actual drawing, cons free and concept one or free and concept three. So it's really not a civil title panel, but still some form of identification of that page. Then the drawing may be prepared on either A4 or A3. I really suggest A3 and must comply with the guidelines and graphical symbols containing sun. So that's re this refers back to initially the correct presentation. You can see here how that suns and the correct presentation lines up. The drawing must provide clear evidence that a high level of competency has been attained in free and drawing methods. This is your assessment whether you are competent in freehand drawings. And so please make sure it doesn't look like your little sister done this drawing. All right, this of course, number three here, goes with your checklist. Also, this number three. This is where the marks will be allocated when 
marked. Each solution, your first solution and your second solution will be graded according to this criteria. So you can check this for yourself. Make sure that the new building showing all the rooms, areas and the walkways. Does your show the media center, the pantry, the storeroom, the disabled bathrooms, etc. and the walkways. Is it clearly, is all of that indicated? Correct presentation of building features. Did you indicate your roof line correct, your walls, the doors, etc. All fixtures, the toilets, the hand wash basins, built-in counters. Is that included? That's the permanent fixtures. Of course, we're not going to do the desks and the chairs here. It's all fixtures. Then correct presentation of all fixtures according to Suns, which I've said before, the relative size, propo size proportion of all features to each other. And that really is up to you to make sure with that grade paper that you've got your sizing correctly. You need to include primary labels and primary dimensions. Look at how many marks this is. Okay, it's a significant amount of marks. Two area calculations shown and within the specifications. So, so those calculations that you show must be within the specifications which I refer to now. And then your design functionality and effective utilization of space. This is going to be very much important and your teacher will judge that. Okay, that gives you a total of 20 it's divided by 2. So each one of these are 10 marks. But in the total of the pad, you can see this is 20 marks. It's roughly about 10% of your pad just here in concept 3. Okay, let's have a look at how to do this. Okay, I've taken a moment to actually come up with this page. Now, I think all of you um, will need to do something similar before you actually start drawing. Now, you've done your formal design brief with your specifications on constraints, but I like to just do like a brain map of each of the key parts. We've got the media center, the kitchen, and the toilets. The media center, they specify as 180 square meters. The kitchen has 70 square meters. And then the toilets, 30 square meters, okay? The overarching or the total area is 280. Why do we say start with this? Because remember, your building, the measurements and the dimensions of that building can't be more than 280 square meters. Okay, I'm going to say this one catch here that I'll come back to. So what's in the media center? You've got a modern library. You've got separate, a separate computer room with 10 stations that must be fitted in there. You've got one entrance. You've got a common office at 15 square meters in size. You've got a storeroom of 18 square meters in size. You have a serving desk for the checking out of books. Okay, there's one or two other specifications that they mentioned, but these are the key ones. The kitchen, you've got to have sufficient work surfaces. You have two double sinks. You have to have space for two stoves and two fridges. You have a 4 meter serving hatch in the outer wall, that's important of that serving hatch placement. You then also have an 18 square meter pantry with a 3 meter roll up door, emergency exit that leads into the media center. Okay, and with the toilets you need a separate male and separate female. In the male they specify as one urinal, one toilet and a basin. The females is a basin and two toilets. Plus, they say that these toilets must be disabled friendly. So, with this means your toilet at the male will have to be a disabled toilet and at least one of these at the females also needs to be a disabled toilet. Now, here's the challenge. If we consider disabled specifications, 30 square meters that's remaining on the toilets is really very, very little. The kitchen is set at 70. The media center was proposed at 180. Okay, to make sufficient space, what they've agreed upon is that you can take away from the media center up to a minimum of 165 square meters. And you can add that 15 to this 30, which brings you to 45. So as long as your toilets are between 30 and to 45 square meters in total, making provision for your disabled sized toilets, your media center is the one that can lose a bit of its square meters and go down as low as 165. So that's going to be important here. In total, we have to keep to the 280. So how do you start these drawings? Okay, you're going to start it off with a grid paper like this. And you will have for yourself to kind of scale this. I'm going to go with a scale 
where one of these blocks, I'll just color one in here, one of these blocks in my drawing that I'm going to do is going to be one meter by one meter. Okay, so what do I suggest you do? Take your grid graph paper and put it below a clean A3 sheet. Okay, not sure if you can see it on this camera, but it's very easy for me now to see the actual grid here. And I know that each one of them is one meter by one meter. Now, the thing with this is, the first time you do it, do not think you're going to be drawing the drawing that you're going to have in your pad document. You need to come up with a practice round, and this is our practice round. So, you can take a nice pencil, all right, pick one that you have nearby, and let's start massing it. Now, we're referring back to this page and I'm going to try and get my the square meters of the three key entities within these boundaries set. Okay, so let's start. If I go 12 meters here, it's 12 blocks. So I'll just mark them. That's one, two, three. That's a total of 12 meters in this free hand drawing. And if I go down 14, 14 and a half, Okay, I'm very close to my 180, 165 square meters. And I'm just going to draw an outer line here. I'm, having, I'm not doing double wall lines yet. I'm not putting in windows. I'm just drawing the outside of this box. And it's still rough. It's just my practice round. I'm just making sure I can fit all of this on a page. Okay, then this is going to be my media center and library. Okay, now... Let's look at what's required here. We've got to have a storeroom. Now, if I go 18 square meter storeroom, if I have 2 meters here and 9, okay, I'll just leave my doorway open. So that's my store of 18 square meters. Okay, then I have, I have my media center side and my modern library side. And in between, I need to have some kind of office that serves both these sides. And that office is 15 square meters. So if I get round about the middle here, and I do one, two, three meters. Okay, let me move it a bit on. Three meters and by five, one. Okay, remember this is all glass. It's like a glass cage. Okay, I can put my doorway here on either side. Because that doorway needs to service both sides. I just do another glass wall here. It can also have maybe swinging doors or something. And then I have my service desk roughly a meter behind it. And the service desk is about 600 wide. So it's about half of this meter block. That's my service desk. So I have my office. 15 square meters. I have my service desk here. And I have my modern library. And my computer room. Okay, so we've got this kind of sized. We're roughly around about 12 meters here and 14 to 15 meters here. You can adjust them, of course, according to your own design. All right, then we're going to have our kitchen next to it. Now, that kitchen is 70 square meters. So if we just go, it, we, we're going to go with a T design here. Let's just go one, two, three and a half. Okay, that's our 7 meters um, width here, and we got 10. Okay, that's a very easy. Okay, that's a very easy kitchen of 10 by 7. And in here again, we have a pantry of, again, 18 square meters. So we can go 2 plus 9. One. Okay, we have an exit door to the back here, to the outside. Uh, okay, sorry, that's a three, milli three meter delivery door. So we're going to have to make adjustment here. I missed that. Okay, sorry about that. So we've got three meter wide delivery door for this kitchen. Okay, that means we can, we'll have to add our 18 square meters round about here somewhere. So my shape changed for uh, this pantry. There's my door. This here is my three meters door to the outside. And then there's an emergency exit going into the media center. Just, that's why we're doing this rough, ne? because if you try and do this the first time, you're going to mess it up. So 
we can play around here it's still our concept so three meter wide door comes here we've got an emergency exit there's another door we've got our um, pantry here and then we're going to have our four meter serving hatch and we can decide where we want it because it's on the outer wall here let's just place it here for now here's a nice big serving hatch okay and we've got our walls now we can go and decide where we want to put our basins etc i'm not going to do the internal layout for you here that's something that you can do we've got to have a doorway opening here nice big door into the media center and then on the side we can do our disabled toilets now that is roughly 40 square meters so you already have seven here if we go six we're at 40 42 square meters so that's going to be fine and you can then of course here again according to your research and your sizing it's going to make it the, i think the male side will be slightly smaller because of the urinal the females need to fit to disabled and in this then of course you can decide where you want your doors going in here remember they're going to be a bit wider for the disabled access okay that's just an overview of how you actually go and mass it added to this you've got your two and a half meter um, walkway that needs to be incorporated here so that's round about here and this walkway goes in the direction of the main buildings okay so this concept that i've drawn here let's say for instance we would on our site plan place it in this area here okay then that t would be lined up roughly here your sizing might be different than mine of course okay and that could be your walkway going down to the existing buildings whichever way you decide right so if it's placed like this of course the l could also work then most of this building would have been down here you'll have to come up with your own design but that's where it will connect with your existing building the walkway and look the sewer line is exactly where we want it it's on the side here so it's going to be very easy to connect to this sewer with your um, inspection eyes and your runoffs from either the kitchen let's write it here and then your bathrooms okay so that's a that's a first round of practicing once you have this you're going to redraw and you're happy with this concept this is my first concept and we've got a t design here once you're happy with this you're going to take the same grid paper and you're going to take a blank piece of paper now i've seen on my actual design you know this is a bit space to the side and i want it really a bit more in the center of the page that's always nice if you can see a learner has planned their freehand sketch you have to consider where you're going to have the table in the corner i really encourage you to put at least a border and a simple title block at the bottom that at least shows name page number and the title of this page and of course you can write not to scale because it is a free android um, so that's that will be your first exercise you'll still have to add in your roof lines these walls will have to be double walls windows doors all of that i'm going to show you some examples of previous work so that you just have an understanding of the level of competency that is required from you let's have a look at that okay so here is an example of previous learners work and i'm showing you this to show you the quality of the drawings expected by your teachers and moderators we've got the same um, sun's requirements met in these free hands as in your actual working drawings later on look at the outer walls indicated correctly the windows with the window sills you've got your built-in cupboards you've got your fixtures like in the bathrooms your basins etc even in the kitchen each one is clearly labeled with the floor finishing you've got your doorways correctly indicated with the door frames and your building uh, roof lines also so it's really all of the details that you would see in your initial floor plan except your light fittings and your sewer also pay attention to the measurements the key dimensions you can see here they didn't do detail but they all asked for primary dimensions make sure those dimensions are on the left hand side um, if it is a vertical dimension and if it's a horizontal dimension that dimension must be on the top of your measurement line also make sure that these drawings are actually labeled and um, of course it's free and so it's not to scale on the right hand side they took the extra step of indicating the areas in a little bit of a key drawing here but you of course don't need to do that but 
the actual information with regard to the area calculations must be shown and this also must please be freehand so everything on this is going to have to be freehand let's look at another example this one of course a nice dark pencil used um, and but you can see here again all of the requirements met in this drawing for the freehand concept including the area calculations they've got a nice um, border around it which really finishes your drawing and look at the placement nicely placed in the center don't forget this north arrow and then the last one this one was done um, with um, colored pencils which is fine but i actually don't encourage it just because you get lost in some of that detail if the colors aren't working well enough so make sure this is the standard that you bring to your free and concepts right i'm sure you all enjoyed that video thank you for watching Remember to subscribe and share it with your friends so that we can help every EGD learner in this country. Cheers!